are the story the lines that you fix be smoking your likes and comments like pop dreams. The praises I receive from Marys and James are never the all cracked up to me. You see, every time I take one hit of affirmation, I'm itching for my next fix of recognition. My soul bears the track marks of people pleasing and desperation. I, I almost overdosed at every poetry show because people would tell me that I'm dope. And so I've come here today in hopes of burying my troubles with those who share my struggles because this is an AA meeting and we are all approval addicts. But God has been showing me that if I don't work on my character off stage, I will stand on stage portraying nothing more than a character. A character of a Christian who appears to be far more spiritual than I actually am. So I stand before you as a transparent and imperfect man. Being humbled by the hands that hold me together even when I don't have it all together. I'm struggling with the sin of always wanting to be significant and I'm sick of it. I wish my life spoke as loudly as my Facebook. I wish I praised him as loudly when no one was looking when he is the only one who could see. I wish I was as thirsty to hear my Savior speak as I am for strangers to Facebook me. I wish instead of seeking approval from people, I would seek myself approved to God because truthfully speaking, I have a much easier time speaking truth on pages and stages than sharing truth as I stand to the faces of those God has placed me into an actual relationship with. So can I honestly say I love God and people if I want nothing to do with discipleship? Maybe all my super spiritual social media posts aren't fishing for me and they're just fishing for compliments. How ironic that we can call ourselves followers of Christ and not actually follow Him. Because who wants to walk when you can talk on a timeline? Spending all day online, checking notifications every five minutes, waiting on the world to applaud the death of your spiritual life as if in God's eyes you haven't really arrived until you have at least 5,000 followers and your leaders going viral. But pride is a virus that Jesus gave His life to heal. But let's be real. Jesus didn't die so we could become somebody's. In fact, God left his throne to the throne of us, gave his life away and became a nobody. Born in a barn in the middle of nowhere to a nobody. Had no beauty or majesty to attract us, no money to entice us. The son of man didn't even have a place to lay his head. Instead of earthly success, he dressed himself in a towel, washed the earth off our feet, wrapped his divinity in humanity, his majesty in humility, his infinity became intimacy. The motive of his ministry was love, Jesus. Jesus didn't go to the cross for applause or shed his blood for a man's. His greatest sermon was lived out loud as crowds crowded around the cross with cross words. The dying Messiah left them puzzled like cross words. The king, deserted by his closest friends, his intent was to bless, not to try to be impressive. What a lesson for his ministers that this mission is a calling and not a competition. So I pray, I pray I'm not up here speaking for the class. But the lamb will receive the full award for the lashes on his back because sometimes I get it backwards. But I pray my world is back on my words because it's absurd to think I could be fooled of the spirit and myself at the same time. I'm here to remind you, fellow approval addicts, that God did not choose you for your goodness or giftedness, but you are accepted as a gift of his graciousness. That the payment for your sin was never intended to buy you a platform, but to make you his platform. It's the Lord, not his performance. It should be on display because as soon as pride walks on stage, God walks off. And the last I checked, only his words can cause the dead bones to rise to its feet. And only Jesus spitting can open eyes and cause the blind to see. I can drop bars, but only God can drop your bars and set the captives free. These spoken words might reverberate through this microphone, but when he speaks, he crackles the galaxy. The word that turns to light is as heavy as gravity. So let the fact that he made you from dirt be the reality that brings you back down to earth because you are way too small to be the center of your own universe. Because who are we? And who am I that he is mindful of me? Because God is the most high, but those seated on high, his eyes are on the lowly. He gave up his one and only, knowing I'm a treat it three times, holy God, like number two, and it's funny. How I spent my entire life seeking approval from people when God already gave me his step of approval through the blood of Christ. When will that start being enough?